Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I know quite a few of you have been with us throughout the day today, or at least part of it. And if any of you are just joining us now, welcome to our Super Science Saturday event. We've been having a blast all day with rockets launching and snack making and dance parties and science activities of all sorts. So this is going to be a really special one. This is a game that we're going to play now called Fact or Fib. And I have a few of our in-car scientists on with me today to play this game. And all of you are going to play this game with us. So this is a little bit like the game Two Truths and a Lie, if you know that game. Except we're switching things around, and this is going to be one truth and two lies, or two fibs. Now, this game is meant to help you practice listening to scientific information and really thinking about things, thinking critically and using the knowledge that you have to decide if what you hear is a fact or a fib. And sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference. And we've got our scientists on here today and in any normal day when our scientists are working, of course, they're gonna always be speaking in facts and telling the truth. But for today's game, they're gonna have a little bit of fun with maybe trying to fool some of you and fool you into thinking that answers that they're giving to some questions um, are the factual ones. But you're gonna have to choose who's telling the fact and who's telling the fib. So to play this game, I know we entered once a link into the chat. You're gonna need to go to a platform called Slido. And how this is gonna go is I'm gonna ask a question to our three scientists, Cecile, Jared, and Carl. They're each gonna offer an answer and all of you out there in the audience are going to have to decide which answer is the factual one, which is the real, true answer. And after we hear the three answers that they offer, we're going to go over to Slido, to that link that I just put in the chat, and we're going to put up a poll, and we're going to ask all of you to um, choose which answer you think is a fact. Okay? I think we're ready to start. All right, I'm gonna pull up my questions here. Scientists, are you ready? You're all looking a little sneaky today. I don't know, it's gonna be hard. Okay, let's go with question number one. Question number one is, why is the sky blue? Ooh, can, I, can I go first? So, um, so the sky is blue because of the reflection of sunlight on the oceans. So the Earth's surface is covered 70% by ocean and 30% by land, which means there's a whole lot more ocean than there is land. And indeed, from space, the Earth appears blue. And that's because of the reflection of the blue ocean. That is why the sky looks blue. Huh. Anybody want to offer yours? I think that's not correct. Here's the truth. When light goes through the atmosphere, the particles in the air scatter the light like a bunch of marbles. The light from the sun is composed of all colors of the rainbow. The air scatters blue light more than the other colors, and that is why the sky appears blue. This is also why the setting sun gets yellow, orange, and then red, because the blues are progressively getting removed. Hmm. Okay, then listen to those guys. Then the color of the sky is all about temperature. For instance, think about your shower faucet. Blue means cold and red means hot. Or think about little kids' lips that turn blue when they are cold at the swimming pool. It's the same for the sky. It's blue because it's very, very cold. Then you might have noticed that the air temperature decreases with altitude. For instance, when you go to the top of a mountain, it's colder at the top than at the bottom. And you know that the sky is very high and it's very cold up there and it's why it's blue. It's as simple as this. Um, am I on? I'm on. Okay, audience, I hope you listen very carefully to all those explanations because one of them is the actual truth about why the sky is blue. And the other two 
are fibbing. So now's your chance to think about what you know, think critically, go to that link in Slido and you should see a poll letting you choose between those three answers. Jared said that it's the reflection of sunlight on the oceans. Cecile said that it's temperature. Blue is cold, red is hot. And Carl argued that it's particles in the air scattering the light. So audience, go ahead and vote for which one you think is the true fact of these answers. We're gonna pull up the results as they're coming in. Oh, mm. Unmute them. Let's unmute our scientists and see what they have to say about this. Come on, more people really need to be voting for me. I mean, clearly <laughs> I have the right answer. <laughs> I don't know. Vox Populi, Vox Day. You know, what are you going to say? Well, what I'm seeing is that most people who voted think that Carl is giving us the facts that particles in the air scatter the light. Thank you very much. And in fact, that is true. Carl was telling us the truth. <laughs> and. Cecile and Jared, fibbers this time. Good try. <laughs> okay, are we ready for question number two? Ready. You got it. Yeah. Bring it on. Okay, question number two. What is the Earth's atmosphere made of? So the Earth's atmosphere, I'll, I'll start out. The Earth's atmosphere is actually mostly nitrogen with oxygen coming in a distant second place. And the remaining bits of the atmosphere are argon, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and even helium. But thankfully, there isn't quite enough helium in the air to make everyone's voice sound funny. Uh, because if, if we all sounded funny, then if we sounded normal, I guess that would sound funny. But that is what the atmosphere is made of. Okay, this is okay. I should say this is completely wrong. Then the atmosphere is composed only of two gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Then everyone has heard about oxygen. It's the gas you need to breathe. But you might have also heard about carbon dioxide. And uh, you might even have heard that too much carbon dioxide is bad for the planet because it's warming the atmosphere. Then basically the, ga the atmosphere is made of these two gases, half oxygen and half carbon dioxide. And fortunately, even that the carbon dioxide has increased in the last century, we still have enough oxygen to breathe. No, 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 no. It's very simple. Atmosphere is made of evaporated water. Air and water are opposite phases of each other. You know how puddles dry up when the sun comes out? They, the puddles become water vapor and clouds condense to form rain. Water and air are in equilibrium, meaning that they exchange phases back and forth. Puddles become clouds of gas, air, and clouds later become rain and then puddles again. Humans can breathe water vapor, but of course we can't breathe liquid water. Hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. this is a tricky one because everybody's talking about some different gases and things in the atmosphere. Mm, I can't wait to hear what the audience thinks. So audience, you're gonna go back over there to Slido and you're gonna make your vote for who is giving us the facts in this question. Is it Carl? He's saying that it's a lot of water vapor. Cecile claims that it's carbon dioxide and oxygen. And Jared is saying nitrogen, oxygen, and other things too. So when you're ready, think through that. Go ahead and vote.
So how are the results coming out? I'm, I'm really eager to see that. Yeah, me too. I'd like to know the truth. Uh, oh, I'm in the lead. My gosh. Oh. You're, you're getting oh. blank. Do, I love that one. Oh. Yeah, you're getting skunked there, Carl. Yeah, oh. Jarrett was correct. These kids are very strong. <clears throat> Wow, we 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 got some folks in the audience that are hard to fool. I tell you what, who knew? You most people were right again this time. It was Jared telling us the truth about this, and our fibbers, Cecile and Carl. <laughs> I want to go first next time. <laughs> Jared, is there anything Have else you wanted it. to tell us about that? Yeah, so actually, um, it, in the atmosphere, um, every breath we take, uh, a little over three quarters or almost four fifths uh, is made up of nitrogen, actually. And then just a little bit over one fifth uh, is made of oxygen. So you would think that most of what we breathe is oxygen because that's what we hear all the time, that we need oxygen to breathe. And we do. That it's just that our atmosphere is actually mostly something else. Um, and now you also do hear a lot about carbon dioxide, especially with regard to climate change. Carbon dioxide is actually a very tiny, tiny uh, constituent of the atmosphere. You can think of it almost like Tabasco sauce that you would put uh, on some food. You only need one or two little drops of Tabasco to really add a lot of heat. And uh, that's kind of similar to what carbon dioxide is. There isn't much of it, but it's pretty powerful for um, uh, trapping heat in the atmosphere. Mm, okay, interesting. I'm learning a lot today with these. Whew. I might. Yeah, we cannot cool fool them. Time. It's amazing. Yeah, we got some. We got. Kids some are too small these days. <laughs> okay, who's in my days we could fool kids. Yeah. <laughs> Carl really wants to get everybody with this one, I bet. <laughs> Let's find out. Everybody ready for question three? Why are oil and gas and coal called fossil fuels? I bet most people have heard the term fossil fuels these days. Why are they called that? <clears throat> have you ever driven by a Sinclair gas station? Or maybe you don't remember the sign out in front, but you do remember seeing a green dinosaur out in front of the station. The term fossil fuels comes from that dinosaur. Sinclair Oil Corporation was founded in 1916, and they wanted a nice popular logo so people would recognize their products. Everybody knows about fossil dinosaurs, and so they called Sinclair Gas the fossil fuel. I'm going to fill up my car with fossil fuel. And the name just stuck. Ha. Okay, whatever. Don't listen to the really. I have the correct answer. Then the reason oil, gas, and coal are called fossil fuels, it's because they were formed from fossilized remains of plants and animals. Then indeed, this was plants and animals that lived a very long time ago, like millions of years ago. And typically, oil and gas come from plankton that live in the ocean, while coal come from land vegetation. But these were plant and animal that live millions of years ago. Jared, do you want to offer an answer? Yeah, yeah I, I really need to set you guys straight here. So oil, gas, and coal are called fossil fuels because when we think of fossils, we think of things that are old and obsolete. So calling them fossil fuels is a way to signal that this is the old way of giving us energy um, to burn for electricity or to burn as fuel in cars, trucks, ships, airplanes, and even lawnmowers. And because it's the old way, we really should find something newer and better. Hmm. Oh, very interesting. Vote for me, vote for me. I bet people out there are thinking hard right now. Let's go to the poll. Everybody make your vote. Who's telling us the truth? Is it Cecile that they're formed from fossilized remains of plants and animals? 
or Carl that the green Sinclair dinosaur started at all, or Jared. They're like old outdated things from the past, which we refer to as dinosaurs and fossils a lot. What do you think, audience? We can share. Mm. Mm. Little bit of a split decision there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah then, okay, I had the correct answer. Then fossil fuel come from plants and animals that live on our planet millions of years ago. And indeed, you should know that most of the energy in use in the United States is still coming from fossil fuel, even if you see a lot of wind farm or solar panels around, we still use a lot of fossil fuels. Okay, thank you, Cecile, for the factual answer that time. <laughs> and Carl and Jared, good try, but we know that you were the fibbers. My answer was... My answer was kind of backwards from the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Just a good one. Mine was and some partially accurate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In 1916, it okay. sounded pretty good. We have time for one more question, scientists. Are you ready? And yeah. then I will welcome, I think we'll have a little bit of extra time. So for the audience so, out there who's been participating, if you have any questions that come up about these questions and answers that we've been talking about, feel free to enter them in the Q&A in Zoom. And we'll have a few minutes for our scientists to, to factually answer all of your questions afterward. In the meantime, here goes question number five. What makes lightning? Doesn't everybody want to know that out there? What makes lightning? Zeus sends lightning bolts when he is displeased with mortals. <laughs> Just kidding. We know more about lightning than the ancient Greeks did. See my hair? I'm going to demonstrate this. And, and the lightning bolt on my chest, see, that's here too. So lightning and big clouds often happen together, and moist air rushes upwards to create the cloud. As the air rushes upwards, it creates charged particles in the cloud, and a few million of those particles, the charged static charge builds up, and in the sky. And finally, that electrical charge suddenly releases in a bolt of lightning. OK, OK, sorry, Zeus is wrong again and again and again. Then indeed, lightning is caused by a chemical reaction that produces light. And there are many examples of chemical reactions that produce light. Then, for example, you can think about glow stick or fireworks during the 4th of July. Then this is a very good example of chemical reaction that produce light. And indeed, it's the same for lightning. Lightning occurs with oxygen in the atmosphere, react with the smoke of barbecues. Then lightning is just a chemical reaction between oxygen and barbecue smokes, and that reaction produces light. And you might even notice that usually we have more lightning in the summer than in the winter. And the reason is very simple. It's because we have more smoky barbecues in the summer than in winter. Jared? See, you both are wrong. I, I'm going I'm to set everyone straight here. So lightning happens when one cloud collides with or rubs against another cloud. So this collision or rubbing causes friction. Friction causes heat, which sometimes results in sparks. This is very similar to when you rub two pieces of metal together um, or scrape a piece of metal on a sidewalk, like my neighbor did on Halloween uh, last weekend. Uh, when he dressed up as a scary movie character and dragged a big rusty knife along the sidewalk uh, to scare kids and adults as they walked by. The friction from the metal rubbing on the sidewalk, uh, rubbing on the cement, caused sparks. It's the same thing with lightning. Lightning is just really big sparks. Hmm. Okay, this is a big one because lightning is tricky. I wonder yes. who was giving us the real information this time. Everybody go to Slido and cast your vote for who 
Is Ooh, it's us changing the around. Yeah, I was winning for a little while. But... Mm. Let's give it a few more seconds. It looks like people are still putting in some votes. A couple more. Vote seconds. for me. Vote for me. <laughs> vote for me. Vote for the truth. And... Don't vote for Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, they're all voting for Zeus. Oh, I got another vote. There's a few votes here. So this time it looks like everyone or most people, 57%, made the right cho choice. Carl was giving us the facts today in this one. Yeah, <laughs> Zeus know what he's talking about. Ah, Zeus. Oh! Knows what he's talking about. And Cecile and Jared were a couple of fibbers. <laughs> okay, well, that's all the questions we have for our game today. But I want to say thanks to our scientists and thanks to the audience for playing. And I'll say again, you know, I'm impressed at how well the audience did in picking out the facts from the fibs, and that's really important these days. There's a lot of information out there in the world that isn't entirely true. And I can tell that everyone who's joining us today is doing a real good job of thinking critically and using their knowledge and really thinking about what makes sense out there. And like I said, our scientists are pretty good at facts on any given day. Today, they were just trying to fool you like a bunch of fibbers, but it's been a fun game. And I'm wondering, we have just a minute or two for a couple of questions. There are, there's a question that came in in the chat. Um, oh, it's just a comment from Vincent. You guys are all very good. Any hypothesis was really convincing. Great job and very useful. Thanks, Vincent. I'm glad you, you enjoyed it. <laughs> and if there aren't any other questions, then. I'll just say it was, pr it was pretty fun to come up with these plausible fibs that melded a little bit of truth with a little bit of fiction to be close to accurate, but not quite. Yes. That's a good point. And we actually And I got see a, a comment. Yeah, I see a comment in the. Yeah, this is, this is a good it, question depending. that yeah. came in. A lot of people say that the sky is blue due to the reflection of the ocean, which is what one of you said. Was this once a popular belief? Did a lot of people believe that at some point, just like the world being flat? You know, I'm not totally sure like how common this belief is, but I've certainly heard it before. Um, so I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how widespread that belief was, um, but yeah, it's it's a fairly common misconception. Now you will see um, water sometimes often looks blue because it's actually absorbing light from the sky or reflecting from the sky. And so it's kind of the reverse of what's actually happening. Ah, interesting. Great. Well, thank you, sneaky scientists, for playing our fact or fib game today. And thank you to the audience. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back very soon with another session at 1.30. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, all. Bye. Bye-bye.